Butterick, 7,000. I wasn't sure I was gonna like these split pants, but I love them. They are super easy to make and the split doesn't go all the way around. So the split only goes as high as a pair of shorts would. So when you walk, the split moves and the pants have such a beautiful flow to them, but it doesn't open up. You can't pull it open. So it's like a faux wrap dress. It's a faux wrap pair of pants. Big wide waistband. I put a two inch elastic in and uh, yes, the only thing they're missing is pockets. So next pair, but isn't this tro tropical print is crazy it's from Minerva it's absolutely wild and this is a linen blend so it's perfect for any kind of uh, warm weather vacation that you have or just for a fun party so it's fall here in New England and you know you can complement this pair of pants with just about anything so here I have this crop gauze moto jacket it's old it's been in my stash for a while this beautiful white t-shirt is from Stitch Fix and just a pair of pink sandals and it is really stunning, beautiful, good to go. All right, we are getting ready and getting started on our Butterick 700 pants. And we're gonna start by sewing the inside leg seam. So we're making version B and we're gonna make, so making the long, the long pants. I'm going to take my back pieces which is piece three, and set them right side up because we want to sew a back to the front at this inner leg seam here. Okay. Piece one is our front piece. So we're going to line that up right sides together with our back. These should go up pretty quick. I don't think there's gonna be a lot going on with these. I mean, we have that flap going around, but uh, that is it. So we're gonna take the back piece three and the front piece one, pin them at the crotch seam, pin them all the way down at the bottom. With pants, you wanna make sure they're on grain. You know, if they're off grain, they'll twist. And you also want to make sure that you pin them and that they are pinned well so you don't have, you know, if you don't pin them, the bottom piece will grow, uh, will shorten, and it'll end up, you'll end up with something like this at the bottom, you know, where the under piece is shorter than the top piece. We don't want that, obviously, because then we're trimming and then the grain is off. So to prevent that, you want to, Put some pins in and the reason that happens is because the feed dogs feed the bottom piece faster on your sewing machine than the presser foot does so we're just going to pin both of our inner leg seams and stitch those up with a 5 8 inch seam allowance okay look at that these are going to be wild this fabric is crazy so i've sewn it i uh, overlocked it because this linen is really ravelly and I pressed one seam to the back and one seam to the front, and now we're going to sew up the crotch seam. So we're gonna lay these right sides together. And we're gonna sew up this center crotch seam. So what I like to do is butt my center seams together, right? Because we have them going different directions. The seam allowances, we can get this a real nice juncture here. And then you can pin up at the top. On each side. And then finish matching these up and pinning them all the way around. Now the pattern asks you to restitch and, and you do want to kind of restitch this area. If you don't, I'm overlocking my seams. If you don't have an overlocker, then I would definitely do a second row of stitches. So if you have a 5 8 inch seam allowance, you wanna do a second row of stitches at like 3 8 of an inch because um, it's a little bit of safety in case you pop 
your crotch seam. So we're gonna go ahead and sew that together. All right, we sewed our crotch seam. I didn't trim mine by hand because I did it with the serger. And because this is linen and it has a, um, a kind of a heavy drape, right in the center of the crotch seam, you want to just clip, I don't go all the way quite to the seam, but just a little bit because that what that does is it loosens up the fabric and it gives it a place to go. So our pants are starting to look like pants here. We're gonna flip these around. Look at that. Okay, we have two legs and we have a center front and a center back. Now, because we're adding that wrap onto the pant, we want to um, reinforce the side seams. So on your tissue, on your front and back tissue, there is, there are these dots and you wanna choose your size, find the dot that works for your size and mark it on your pants if you have not already done so. I'm just going to put a pin at that mark and then I'm going to run just like a two inch strip down there because I need to clip that in order to um, make it move when I add the overlay. And I want to make sure that that's reinforced. I want to make sure that the fabric isn't going to unravel. So I'm going to do kind of a tiny stitch on that, maybe like a 2.2 or something, just to keep that from being um, torn when, uh, when I wear it. Now on the front leg, we want to finish the edge because we have this finished opening here. So this front leg, we want to finish this front edge below the dot. So you're going to fold your side seam under 5 eighths of an inch. And I like to pin it into my ironing board. If you use glass head pins, you can pin, you can iron over them. So fold it over 5 eighths of an inch and pin it and then come back and fold under, right, the raw edge. So now you have something that's about a quarter of an inch pin it again, iron it, and then you can stitch it down really close to the edge to finish the front side of your pants. You're also going to do that technique on piece two on the unnotched edge. So this is my notched edge. So the straight edge, not the curvy hip edge, but the straight edge, which is going to be this part here in the front, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to over, you're going to finish it all the way down. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to fold it five eighths of an inch, press it, fold the raw edge inside and then stitch it. So you have four of these seams to do. That's going to take a little bit of time, but that is really the bulk of the work. That's what gives the pattern its style. So once that's finished, we'll be able to finish constructing them and they'll go up pretty fast. We got a lot of fabric going on here. So down the front of our leg, folded that under twice and top stitched it. I went a little crazy. I used light pink uh, with this fabric. There was no way to go right or wrong. And then also we have stitched the outer edge same way of our panel. Now we want to apply the panel to the front of our pants. So we're going to take the panel for this side and put it wrong side to right side. So the pants are facing up and I have my side panel and I'm gonna pin it to the front because we just wanna make this one piece. So I'm gonna pin it to the front down to where the notch is. All right, you can see how close I am with the fabric. I don't like usually using the salvage, but I had just enough fabric, so there is going to be a little bit of salvage in my side seam. So I'm gonna pin the side seam, I'm gonna baste it from the dot up to the top, and then I'm also gonna baste it across the top. Essentially, what we're doing is we're making this one unit. So this is the way our pant front will look uh, once it's stitched, right? We have our pant front that's 
stitched down here that's finished and this leg that's stitched. So when this opens, both of these seams will be stitched. So I'm going to baste those on both sides. I'm going to do the other side too, just to the front panel because they become part of that front panel. All right, I gotta tell you, even for me, these are a little outside the box as far as the print goes. Uh, they're going to be fun to wear. All right. Okay, so we have our front, right? And then we have the panel sewn to the front. Now we're going to sew up the side seams. So we're gonna turn these right sides together. All right, so now we're gonna pin this side seam so we want to start at the waistband, put a pin at the waistband, and you can see now why we we sewed these together. It's just so much easier. They're, they're an actual unit now. So I'm going to start at the waistband, and then I'm going to match these dots at the side and pin, that's all going to get pinned together, front, panel, and back. So this is the hip area. Then we're going to leave this this that this piece that we finished out of the equation and we're going to pin the front and back pan the front panel and the back leg together all right so this is free. So now you have something that looks like a little trifold going on, but this is where the opening happens. So you want to make sure that you pin at the top, you're pinning three layers. You're pinning the panel, the front, and the back. D after that dot that where the clip is, you're just pinning the panel to the back, and you're going to sew both of those side seams. Okay, we sewed up the side seams. I tried them on. They look really, really cute. There's a lot of fabric. But this juncture where uh, the side panel comes into the side seam, with that slit in there, it's very delicate and fragile. So I went back and I stitched down part of this flange into the seam. So this isn't flopping around. This was open and flopping around and that's gonna tear as soon as you you know, step on the pant or trip or it gets hung up in a door frame. So this, I just stitched it about an inch from there to there just to give it a little bit more security now. I don't feel like it's going to come apart on me. Okay, so yeah, they look really cool. And I was worried that this was going to be too high, but it's not actually, it, it seems pretty good. I mean, I haven't walked around in them. I just walked across my studio, but how cute are they, right? Adorable. All right, we're gonna do the waistband. Uh, waistband is piece four and you cut two of them. This is for a one inch elastic. I use two inch elastic, so I doubled, almost doubled the size of this waistband. So let's see. Yeah, I just doubled it. And uh, that makes me happy. <laughs> so we're going to sew the waistband in a big circle. One side you're going to sew all the way across. The other side you need to leave an opening for the waist, for to put the elastic in. Now on this piece, there's, if you're using the one inch elastic, you can see you're going to stitch between, not between these two dots. So you're gonna stitch from here to here and here to here. I'm gonna leave mine open two inches. So I'm just gonna move this dot to here, All right? So this becomes my two dots because I want that to be wide. And you're only doing it on one side because this is actually going to fold over and make itself a facing. So you only need the opening on the inside. So when I stitch this end, I'm going to just stitch from there to about there. It has to be 
less than half. You could put one and a half inch elastic in here if that's what you have. And when I'm sewing, especially if I'm batch sewing things, for me, when I need to start and stop, I put two pins in. It's just a little reminder that on this side, I'm gonna sew to here, I'm gonna back tack, and then I'm just gonna sew this portion over here. So I'm gonna go take that to the machine and get that done. In the meantime, you also wanna measure out your elastic to decide what you want your waist to be. Here we go, our, last, our elastic casing is now one piece. And we're going to take our pants, lay them out in front of us. I have them right side up. With the waistband, you have two side seams and you want to find the center front and the center back. So in order to do that, and I, you can use your tissue. I use my waistband because sometimes I make changes and I want to make sure that I'm actually getting the real center front and the real center back. So if I match up my side seams, I can put a pin here in the center front and then make sure they're still aligned and put a pin here in the center back. And then that way you can align these quadrants with your seams. The other thing we want to think about, we want to find this opening that needs to be on the inside of our garment. And I'm going to put it on the side with the side seam. And I'm going to lay everything out the way I want it to look when it's finished, right? So now I know that that opening is on the inside. That's important. When it's finished, that's where I want it. So this is the way it's going to look when it's done. So now I can fold my waistband around the top of my pants. And then I'm going to take the center front pin and match it to that center front seam. And I'm going to take the side seam of the waistband and the side seam of the pants and match those up. Same thing with this pin. I'm gonna match it up to the center back, this pin that we just added, and then the other side seam of the waistband to the side seam of the pants. This should all fit one-to-one. -one. I mean, that looks, look at that, that looks great. I'm gonna add a few more pins and then stitch this at the 5 8 inch seam allowance if you're nervous, just baste it. That's not a problem. And then you can finish it. And when we come back, we just have to add the elastic and talk about him. All right, wowza. We have our waistband on. This is a good time to press it because you won't be able to get a good press once you put the elastic in. But there we go. That looks great. It's all balanced. It looks terrific. So now we want to add our elastic inside. Measure this elastic around your waist. Get it the length that you want. Put a safety pin in one end and then find that opening and you're going to feed this through the opening and all the way around the inside of the casing. When you get to the end, you're going to overlap the two pieces of the end and do a step zigzag to close them flat. Make sure that you don't twist them, you know, in the process. That would be miserable. After your elastic is stabilized and you've got everything the way you like it and it's nice and neat, then I go back and on the side, I go through the seam allowance, it's called stitch in the ditch, and I stitch through the elastic on both side seams, right through the elastic and the fabric, just right in the seam allowance, you don't even see it. And what that does is it helps keep the, the elastic from twisting when you're wearing it or collapsing or um, twisting in the washing. So let's talk about the hem, which is the last thing you need to do. These are really long on me. I'm five, two and a half, and I didn't shorten them because I didn't know what I was going to wear with them at the time. The pattern recommends that you fold this up an inch and a quarter. I would finish the edge and then fold it up an inch and a quarter. I think that's a really good idea because it gives you some weight to the bottom of the pant so they um, f uh, drape better. That's the word I wanted to look for. So it's pretty, pretty simple with that. And um, yeah, pants are done. Can't wait to see them on.